Buddy Lindsay here from GoJango.com. Glad to see you back with us. I want to talk to you today about deploying Django day to day. So personally, how I do it at work currently is we have a script, a Python script that we log into a management server that we call it and we run the deploy and tell it what site we want to deploy and what we want to deploy onto the servers. Now, what makes that possible is the fact that we're using SaltStack to manage our entire infrastructure uh, of servers and all the different applications that we have. And so it makes it very convenient to make sure all the applications are installed correctly, the servers are set up and everything like that. And so we just have a Python script that runs that in that connects with a Python library in Salt, since Salt is written in Python, to be able to do all the various bits and pieces that it needs to do to, do to deploy. We've even gone a step further and we have introduced a piece of software called Stackstorm, which is kind of like an if this then that for ops. And that actually connects to our Slack. And so now we have the opportunity to do chat ops. So we just do our Slack bot uh, deploy. Uh, and then we, you know, we have different like grammars that we use to deploy what app we want to deploy and in what situation we want to deploy it, like what branch that we want to push out. And that's all talks over a, a VPN inside once it gets into Stackstorm to be able to deploy out to all the different servers of things that need to be deployed. Now, that's kind of a really sophisticated way to deploy our application. So how did we get there though? Well, uh, we started out with, again, we use Salt to manage everything. And in some sense, you can manage your deploys with a salt, a salt stack, a salt state, all on its own, where it just pulls the latest restart supervisor, does all of the other various bits of things that it needs to do. Then you can move from there into a Python script that uses the salt library and then calls, you know, the high state, the uh, collect static, the migrate and all of that on the various servers that you configure that script to run it with. And then once you have that actual Python script and you have it working the way you want it to, taking the arguments that you want it to take, then you can you know, put on top of that stack storm to be able to call that Python script with the various pieces of information that you want it to run. And then you just plug in Slack to that. And it actually is really cool. Now it's a really complicated way to set up your deployments, especially if you have a simple app. You know, uh, we have several different things that we run for our infrastructure, several different Django applications that we do, and we have a, a decent sized team. And so we all need to be able to deploy and it kind of gets tedious to log into the same server every time and run through the commands because inevitably we have somebody new and, you know, we're trying, we have to try to set them up with everything and then run them through like a half an hour demonstration of and there was they can write everything down the way they remember it uh, even though we have it documented so it, it just makes it easier to be able to do the chat ops chat ops process instead now there are a lot easier ways to do deployments on personal projects i have several different ways that i do it i have a couple of projects that i use fabric and fabric is really nice you set up there you go set up your tasks on what you want to do exactly and you run it locally SSH is into the server that has Fabric installed and then remotely executes all of the commands that you want to execute. It works great. I also have another project that uses Salt and does just what I talked about earlier. I have a state for that application that checks out the code. It runs the migrations. It does a collect static. It restarts supervisor, which then starts restarts Gunicorn and poof, it works and, it, and it's good to go. The downside to that one is if I want to check out a specific branch into production or on a test server, I have to go in there and tell it, I have to go in there and change the state and remember that I changed the state. But since it's only a personal project and no one else is going to really mess with it, I have that part of my process to double check what branch I'm going to be checking out. On another project, I actually only ever, you know, do a push of changes once I got up there, maybe once every year to a year and a half and I used to do everything manually and I'm like you know what I'm typing all these things into bash why don't I just create a bash script so I just copy and pasted all the commands I have in put it at the root of that server and I log in and run it and it deploys does all the commands that I would normally do and deploys the app that way 
It's super simple and I didn't make it complex because I push code to that, re to that server so little that I didn't need to make it complex. So these are several different ways that you can do production pushes. There are a lot more ways that you can customize to fit your needs. And I really recommend that you go out and research other ways to do it. I know that in DjangoCon 2015, um, there's a great talk by Peter Baumgartner of Lincoln Loop. And it's actually kind of a model that we've discussed at work and maybe moving to uh, doing productions. I really recommend that you check that out. And I'll leave a link in the show notes below so that you can check that out. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got kind of an, an idea of how you can do some production deployments and kind of some things to think about. Please subscribe to the channel to get the newest videos. Also, leave, also like the video if you liked it. and. Feel free to watch some of the other videos I have linked here and leave a comment below. I want to thank you for watching and have a good day.